Good morning. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's recent visit to Russia was an extremely important event, which had two dimensions. There was a bilateral dimension, and there was a global or a strategic dimension. Now, unfortunately, the global or the strategic dimension, which is extremely important in the world of today, it got completely ignored and underplayed both by the Indian official as well as by the Indian analyst. And the reason for that is that the last visit of Modi to Russia happened in 2019. That is the time five years ago when the Ukraine war had not started. As a consequence of the Ukraine war, many things have happened. But two things I wish to highlight, which are part of our discussion now. One that the world has seen that Russia, as a successor state of the Soviet Union, is today. a great power it is one of the three great powers the other two being china and america and the second the russians have concluded that their strategic vision and their foreign policy should now turn entirely to the east instead of being to the west as a consequence of this the focus has shifted of president putin from from eu which is the eurasian economic union to greater eurasia and his vision based on trade and connectivity is totally aligned with the vision of chinese president xi jinping which is also about trade and connectivity manifested in the form of belt and road initiative so when there are two great powers and their visions align that means they are inseparable it's not a tactical adjustment as the western analysts keep talking up this is unbreakable it is unbreakable till they accomplish their wishes but i will talk about this in a while let me focus on the bilateral relationship which is where the entire focus in any case was plenty has been said on the bilateral ties i want to highlight two issues which have not been spoken of by any analyst the first is the relationship that today ha- in russia has with india is an entirely different relationship everybody spoke about the warmth that traditionally has been the, you know there right from the days of the soviet union well things are different when the soviet union was in power India had good relations with Soviet Union but it was a relationship of two unequals the big difference came in year 2000 when president putin came to power and he offered a equal strategic partnership to india and a big thing that he offered the first thing that he offered was the creation or the making of the brahmos aerospace where the russians helped a lot and they also agreed to a division of work there and we know today the brahmos missile is perhaps our best and the most successful uh, venture of our defense establishment and the other thing that putin did was as part of the equal partnership which was not happening earlier is that in defense he offered restrictive technologies that means what the russians were willing to give now is both the know how and the know why of defense earlier the relationship was different the soviet union would tell us as far as defense was concerned that hey guys you take this thing and we would take it and bring it home the gun or whatever so it has changed in a big way and of course the energy relationship is there including the nuclear energy so this is point 1 that it is now a equal relationship it was an equal in year 2000 not any longer because now uh, it is equal not in the sense that india is still a aspiring major power but russia today is a great power now the other more important thing about a bilateral relationship is that nobody has spoken about the reciprocal exchange of logistic agreement something that the russians have been asking india at least for the last 5 years now let me explain what is this logistic agreement it basically means that the naval vessels of the two nations 
in this case india and russia when they do military exercises extended military exercises port calls or even as escort duties for the commercial shipping then it helps both the countries because the facilities are provided by either side to the vessels of the other side in terms of fuel spare parts and other things which are required for a quick turnaround as a consequence of this agreement what would have happened is that there would have been liaison officer a russian naval liaison officer sitting in the eastern naval command of india which is in vizag visakhapatnam we know very well that vizag is a restricted area it's a area uh, where it is teeming with the russians because this is where the russians are helping us with the strategic assets and this is where the westerners and the americans are not allowed at all so there would have been a russian liaison officer sitting there and a indian liaison officer sitting similarly in the russian pacific fleet at vladivostok and why the russians have been asking for this for a long time is because the modi government with america we signed this similar logistic agreement in 2016 as a consequence of that today the indians have their liaison officer in the american indo pacific command central command africa command and then of course we know that the indians there are you know uh, with we have signed the four foundation military agreements with america as a consequence of this uh, there is a sharing in the maritime domain awareness then uh, we do the malabar exercises with the with the americans and the quad navies then there is a shipyard agreement with the americans which is a very big deal and of course as part of the quad we have accepted a role which has been given by the americans of a net security provider to the indian navy rather the indian military in the indian ocean region now as far as the russians are concerned why the russians were keen on this is because india wants new connectivity routes there are three routes which are being spoken of three routes which are the three routes one is the international north south trade corridor then the chennai vladivostok route and then the north sea route which is opening up in the arctic ocean which connects the pacific with the atlantic this is the shortest route now india wants to be part of that but it is not willing to sign the logistic agreement why that is the key thing that means india is not willing while it wants a bilateral relationship with russia it is not willing to go whole hog and be part of the part of the vision a new vision where the chinese and the russians are there i'll just come to this in a while now another thing that happened there was this is the bilateralism the bilateral part the other thing was that prime minister modi as he normally does whenever he goes abroad he addresses the diaspora and then he criticizes the previous governments who were there to the diaspora i am not going that that way at all but the key thing that he said was and there is some justification to that big justification to that he said that before 2014 and now there has been a big difference today the world sees india as a vishwa bandhu that means we are friends with all now mind you it has nothing to do with modi it has nothing to do with prime minister modi's foreign policy it has to do with the global geopolitics in fact i am surprised that a former ambassador indian ambassador to russia who has spent years in the prime minister office in the security establishment there ambassador pankaj saran he also told the television channel that i don't know why so much of attention has been paid by the world media or is being given to prime minister modi's visit to russia it is a bilateral visit which has happened earlier also no it is not like the earlier times because as i said the global geopolitics has come in and which is why we know today 
there are basically two sets or two security architectures in the world today and they all are playing out in our region. The entire global politics has shifted from the European theater to the Asia Pacific region. And these two visions that we have in very short are one vision is of China fully supported by Russia. This is about becoming a developed world from a developing world. How do you take your 1.4 billion people? I mean, they also have nearly the same population as India. How do you make them into a developed nation? And this is what they call the China dream. And then they want to take it through connectivity and trade along with the Russians to all the global South nations so that they can also have the fruits of development and prosperity. This is one vision. And this is the vision with 80% of the world population, which is global south, finds extremely attractive. The other vision is led by the Americans. Now, what we have in this are the G7 nations. They already are developed nations. They are developed nations. And America, as a consequence of the unipolar world, after the end of the Cold War, now it has become a global hegemon. When we say hegemon, we are talking of military power. So it is basically through military power, it wants to exercise control over, it wants to ensure that its institutions and its rules, they all are, it is obeyed by everybody. So it is an entirely different agenda than the agenda of this security of the Chinese and the Russians. Now, if you see the commentaries which have come out in the Chinese press and the American press, they give an insight about how they are thinking about India. Because as I said, when Modi says that we are a Vishabandhu, we are a 1.4 billion people sitting right at the center of where global geopolitics is happening. We here have an option. There are only two options. One option that we have is that India looks at how to build the stature of the Prime Minister. Now, the way to do that is that we continue with our bilateral relationship with Russia, but we be part of the American-led security architecture. And that is precisely what we have been. In fact, to lure us into it, in 2018, when the Trump administration was there, they changed the name of their uh, of the Pacific Command to Indo-Pacific Command to give centrality and honor to the Indian side. So that is where the Prime Minister, because we in our nation feel that we should be seen, our leaders should be seen, they feel very happy about it with the Western country nations because they are the developed countries, but the world is changing, as I said. So this is one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is that we are a developing nation. We have exactly the same problem as China has. We can learn a lot from China. So that is the other way as to how the benefit, how do we benefit the poor and the underprivileged huge lot of people, something like 80 crores people out of 140 crore population that the prime minister wants to give or is giving the free meals, that means they are the people who are below poverty line. So they have to be brought up. So that is the other agenda. And therefore, we notice that as far as the Chinese press is concerned, in their official uh, you know, mouthpiece, which is the Global Times as well as the China Daily, all the commentaries that came, plus what their spokesperson said, Everything was about welcoming the visit of Modi to Russia. They welcomed it. Because they don't see any competition with India. They don't see India as an enemy nation. They are basically looking at cooperation from a huge country of 1.4 billion, which is well located and has a huge market and where a lot can be done together in a cooperative mode. So they welcomed it which is not the way that the American press and the analysts saw. In fact, 
they got very perturbed by seeing the hug also that Modi and Putin had. I mean, it's customary of Prime Minister Modi. It's his brand that wherever he goes, he hugs the leaders. But that is again a different story. So the key thing is that the hug meant nothing. Because at the end of the day, it appears that India wants only strong bilateral ties with Russia. It does not want to be seen close to or in the company of China and Pakistan. And we saw that in the recent SCO summit as well. Where and in fact the last year India had the presidency 2023 SCO summit which was held in a virtual mode because the whole idea was that Modi does not want to meet with Xi. So we saw that at the recent SEO summit as well as in Kazakhstan that uh, the external affairs minister Jay Shankar attended, the prime minister did not go there. Why? Because SEO again is part of that new architecture of this making the developing nations into a developed nation. See, there are two big nodes of the new architecture. As far as economics is concerned and commerce is concerned, trade is concerned, that has to do with the BRICS, which has been created, fully supported by China and Russia. And then you have the SEO, which is about the security architecture. Again, it has two key elements, which are very distinctive from the architecture of the Americans. And the two distinctive things are that the, this architecture, the new architecture in our region, it talks of indivisible security. That means don't look at absolute security, look at relative security. It is an entirely different ballgame. Focus on the other things, focus on development, focus on trade. Which is not the way that the Americans see they are looking at absolute security. And the other thing is that the SU is about security under the international law as defined by the United Nations. Whereas when the Americans talk of a rule-based order, these order, this has been order has been written by the Americans, it has never been defined, and it has completely bypassed the United Nations. So the point I am making is that a significant visit. Even in bilateral term, it served half a purpose because this reciprocal agreement was not signed and it does, did not touch upon the global agenda which could have helped or which will help the poor and the, you know, the poor people of this country to bring up their level of, um, of their living. So it has not helped them at all. Thank you.